In the previous video, we talked about the second step in the embryonic stages, which is cleavage. In this video, we will talk about the third step, which is gastrulation. Specifically, we will 1. Talk about what occurs during gastrulation, and 2. Go through the differences in gastrulation between species. In this step of the embryonic stages, the blastula undergoes gastrulation. Gastrulation is the movement of cells from the blastula surface into the embryo's interior. This movement of cells into the interior allows for the later development of both tissues and organs. Gastrulation causes the cells to be arranged into three layers, which are known as the embryonic germ layers. The first layer is the ectoderm, and this forms the outer layer. The next layer is the endoderm, and this lines the digestive tract. And lastly, we have the mesoderm, which fills the space between the ectoderm and the endoderm. And these three layers will turn into all the tissues and organs of the organism. Now, the ectoderm eventually turns into the skin, sweat glands, hair follicles, and the nervous system. And the mesoderm will eventually turn into the skeletal, circulatory, lymphatic, and reproductive systems. And the endoderm acts as the lining of all the digestive tract and organs. Now, some species, such as Cnidaria, will only form two layers during gastrulation. And these layers that they form are the ectoderm and the endoderm. And they, these species are known as dipoblasts. Now, dipoblasts uh, are some coral, hydroids, box jellies, and many more. And those that produce all three layers are vertebrates, and these are known as tripoblasts. Next, we will talk about the differences in gastrulation among different species. The first species we will look at is the sea urchin. First, gastrulation in sea urchins begin when cells at the vegetal pole begin moving from the outer ring of the blastula, which is known as the blastocele wall, into the blastocele. So as you guys can see here on the left picture, you have the red cells, and this is the blastocele wall, and these red cells are going to migrate into the blastocele. And these cells are known as mesenchyme cells, and these are migratory cells. After this, the cells of the vegetal pole curve inward, as seen in the second picture, so again, you begin to see these green cells, uh, which are the future endoderm cells, begin to curve inward. And this curve is known as invagination. And the cells connected to the invagination begin to form the digestive tube of the gastrula. This digestive tube is known as the archenteron, and it's formed by endoderm cells. The first opening of the archenteron, seen here, is known as the blastopore. So again, you see the opening? This is the blastopore. And it's the future anus of the organism. After our kenteron is finished extending through the gastrula, a second opening is formed, which will be the organism's mouth. So this will keep extending, and it will eventually wind up somewhere around here, and there will be an opening, and this will be the mouth. Gastrulation in frogs is slightly different than that found in sea urchins, although both have three germ layers. Gastrulation for frogs begins on the dorsal side of the blastula, located where the great crescent is. The cells on the dorsal side begin to invaginate or push inward. This invagination is known as a blastopore and causes a crease along where the gray crescent is, which is seen here. The blastopore slowly extends around both sides of the embryo and meets together on the ventral side, making a complete circle. So as you can see here, uh, you have the blastopore that if you saw a 3D image of the embryo, you'd see that it's around in a full circle. After this, the endoderm and mesoderm cells on the surface of the embryo begin to roll into the center, and this process is known as involution. So as you can see, as you move along the steps um, in this process, you'll see that the ectoderm cells, seen in blue, it almost looks as if they are taking over. What's actually happening is these endoderm cells, seen in green, are moving inward on the embryo, and the ectoderm cells are beginning to cover the surface. After these cells move into the interior of the embryo, they move away from the blastopore and toward the animal pole, organizing the layers so that the endoderm is on the inside. And finally, there is a yolk plug near the ventral pole of the embryo as seen right here. And this is now going to be covered by ectoderm cells and the layer is complete as you can see here. Gastrulation for chicks is just slightly different than that of frogs. The embryo of the chick is composed of an epiblast level, which is the upper level, seen here, this is the upper level, and a hypoblast level, which is the lower level. And that's, the, that's it there. In chicks, 
the epiblast cells move toward the middle of the blastoderm, detach, and then move inward. And this movement of cells causes a pileup in the middle of the blastoderm, which forms the primitive streak, which is seen right here. And the primitive streak is the same thing as the blastopore for frogs. So again, you have that inward movement in frogs. Well, for checks, this is this inward movement of cells, and this is what it forms again, the primitive streak. Lastly, all the cells that detach and form either the ectoderm, endoderm, or mesoderm cells come from this epiblast level right here. Whereas the hypoblast level helps with forming the primitive streak. Lastly, we have gas relation in humans. Instead of blastulas, humans have blastocysts. They also have an inner cell mass within the blastocysts, which are actually stem cells. The wall of the blastocyst is a cell called a trophoblast, which actually initiates implantation for the embryo. So again, these blue cells, you have the inner cell mass, and these red cells, you have the trophoblast, and then in this fluid-filled cavity, you have the blastocele. And on the left-hand side, you have the endometrium epithelium, which is also known as the uterine lining. For humans, fertilization occurs in the oviduct, and development of the embryo occurs in the uterus. Before gastrulation, implantation occurs, which is initiated by the trophoblast. After that, the entire blastocyst enters the endometrium, as seen here. So in step two, you see that it begins to enter the endometrium, and by step three, it has entered the endometrium. After that, the trophoblast thickens and extends into the surrounding area, which is maternal tissue and is rich in blood cells. So again, you see here the trophoblast begins to extend, and throughout this whole process, you see from picture two to picture four, it extends further. While this is occurring, the inner cell mass of the embryo forms a flat disc, creating an upper and lower level, or an epiblast and hypoblast, as seen here. So these black lines of cells are known as the hypoblast, and this blue circular circle of cells is the epiblast. Now that implantation has occurred, gastrulation can begin. Epiblast cells move inward and begin to form both the endoderm and mesoderm. Also, extra embryonic membranes begin to form, such as the chorion. The trophoblast will continue to expand into the endometrium, and this expanding trophoblast, mesoderm cells, and endometrial tissue are all a part of the formation of the placenta. The placenta is extremely important for the embryo because it exchanges nutrients, gases, and waste between the embryo and mother, and also produces hormones. And now we're at the end of gastrulation. The germ layers have formed and the embryo is surrounded by the extra embryonic mesoderm and four extra embryonic membranes, which include the amnion, the chorion, the allantois, and the yolk sac, which are all seen here. So up here you see the chorion is formed. You have some mesoderm cells. In this section you have the yolk sac formed. Right here, I didn't have enough room to write it, but you have the allantois here and here you have the amnion has formed. So again, this black line right there is where the amnion has formed. So before I go, I just wanna say thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and leave any questions in the comments in regards to this video or any videos you guys would like to see in the future. Thank you.